<laughs> Everyone else has been dealing with the pandemic. I've been dealing with the quality of my camera shot. Oh, I love your lighting. Have you done something with your hair? I'll shot you. Carrying around his kitchen, swinging things around, high energy JJ with his second cocktail of the evening. Se second slash four. Now, as you see, I'm in the office and all the lights have gone off. Um, I'm going to come to Sophie Hill. What brings me joy yeah. is being able to facilitate conversations that look like they would never happen. Crash through the surface where they can't hurt us. We're far from the shallow now. Oh, James, baby, we are <laughs> far from the shallow now. Oops, you're on mute. Can't hear you. I just marched into school and I said, hey, I want to go to Oxford. The history that we have held on to, as an example, uh, is a history that is only partially told. I'm from Reading and um, I'm 18 years old. Read it and weep, I did know that. Oh my God, I feel a bit, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> he's, um, he's got books he's read behind him. I've got the House of Lords behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and good morning, everyone. I think I'm just going to echo, I mean, some of the excellent points that were being made by the other speakers. How do we come back together again? You know, where are the skills for tomorrow? Where are we teaching them? And so, uh, so uh, as long as we do not have young people in leadership, we cannot transition to a new system. I think this is the most serious and dangerous period since World War II. So, you think of your life as a, as a jam jar, and down at the bottom is your, is your sediment. And yeah, I feel really sorry for them. I mean, I've tried my best to help them out as best I can. The goal Liz, is to unlock talent. Because it's not just millennials, but I think people are fed up. And like I said, just to echo Catherine, that we really are only scratching the surface of it. The winds of change have started blowing and are not going to stop. He's droning on and I'm just going to drift away <laughs> of his voice with my favourite orange bone. Life is good. Thank you very much and good night. Your, your room, the proportions of your room, you look like you're inside a gift box. It's lovely. Thank you. Can I just say thank God for tortoise because I think it's really needed. Uh, Incredible that I'm managing to speak to David Miliband from Paris. You're on mute, I think. First of all, James, um, thank you very much for having me and welcome everyone. For people that were, when I was 13 and women's boxing wasn't even an Olympic sport, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be an Olympic champion one day. And they must have thought, like, okay, you know, everybody Wait can do it. <laughs> yeah. Being away, seeing in people's houses, seeing people's ah! yeah. and the noises they make. It... I feel like this is a podcast idea brewing, Matt. Or alternatively, standing carrying a bottle of meths in Catford Precinct, <laughs> shouting passers by. One or the other, we don't know. This lamp, which may be making yeah. everything seem slightly more professional. <laughs> My name's Chris Cook. My name is Polly Curtis. My name's Giles Wittell. My name is Alexi Mostris. But my t-shirt looks a bit cash, doesn't it? I shouldn't have done that. I'm James Harding. Uh, I'm Matt Dancona. I'm an editor and partner at Tortoise. Uh, my name is Liz Mosley. My name's Mary Pimels. Hold on, I'm just going to get a glass of water. I'll be one sec. Lol. So um, if we don't see you before, have a really good break, switch off the screen, take it easy. Um, uh, but thank you everyone uh, for joining us and we'll uh, see you all in the new year. Thanks so much. No, I don't know what's... I wasn't allowed to unmute myself, but now I am. Um... Apologies, we are going to need to end this call. Oh, all right.